What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of JAR. JAR, for those of you that may be new, stands for Joe. And Amy. Review. It's our weekly show where we review the magic stories as they're posted on Wizards' website. But today, the day that we're filming, and the day that the story would normally come out for M19, it is the 4th of July. So for those of you in the States who care to celebrate, happy 4th of July. For those of you not in the States, I hope that your 4th of July is going well. Or went well, because now you'll it'll be after the fact. But... Because of that, Daily MTG is off, there's no magic story today, and so we decided, instead of depriving all of you lovely people of seeing our beautiful faces, mostly hers, uh, the, the, we decided that we would go back and do something that we didn't get a chance to do before the M19 story started, and that was to review the story, really more lore description, from Battlebond. And so, with that, this week we have The World of Battlebond by Allison Lures. So this was posted back on Wizards website on June 6th. We are finally getting back to something written by Allison, which is great. There was a period of time where that was all we were getting and we loved every second of it, don't get us wrong, but yes, we did. but now it's been a while since that and for better or worse, depending on how you feel, that's that's really neither here nor there. But Allison is back at least or was back for this, uh, which was nice. Um, my quick review at the beginning is speaking of quick, this story, this it's not the story. I'm just going to say that out of default. But this article, if you will, was very short. Yeah. Uh, it was very short, yet fun. It was a lot of fun. It was very informative. Whether you cared about the cards or not, if you care about lore and stories and world building, this one had plenty of it, and I would highly recommend it. I don't know about what, what were your Definitely. thoughts. Definitely. So, as we have been doing recently, you can check the description down below. We will have a link to this, especially because you can't just, even if you're watching it the day this goes up, you can't just go to the website and click on the first link, which is usually the story. Uh, this one was, like I said, from a little while ago. So, um, go ahead, feel free to click the link in the description, read the article, and then come back here and share your opinions with us. Um, there's not really there's not really many hot takes we're going to have this week because it's not right. that's not really the kind of thing. But still, we would love to hear your thoughts and opinions and maybe some of your battle bond experiences. So yeah, onto we had a great time playing battle bond. Exactly, it was a really really good time. Um, we if you follow us on Twitter, which you should do, that that'll come up at least twice this week. Um, you will have seen some of the pictures of us having competed in the tournaments because. Guess who we were partners with? Mm -hmm. It just kind of makes sense, right? Uh, so it was it was a lot of fun. And hopefully you guys got out and, and, and had a chance to play it as well. But this was my first time really playing Magic, so... Yeah, and it she was, did... It was a cool experience for me. Yeah, she did an amazing job. Just just yeah. throwing that out there. Um, I had was, a lot of help. It was, hey, you know what? It was a lot of fun, and we did, we did okay, right? I mean, we didn't... I don't think we came in first place ever, but no. we came in second a good number of times, uh, third, etc. And there was one where we scrubbed out, I feel like, but that's, that's life. <clears throat> so anyway, that's neither here nor there for this, except that, you know, it's the, kind of the spirit of the, the Battle Bond story. So for this article... Uh, this wasn't a story, as I said, but it was written by Allison, but to the point where she introduces herself in the beginning, and then it, it kind of, and then kind of references back to herself at the end again, saying like, I'm looking forward to this, or we welcome you, or things like that, which really means that this story was told, or this article was written straight from Allison's perspective, which was really nice to see. I appreciated yeah. that, and it was nice to be able to know whose voice was talking to us. As opposed to just kind of a broad narrator, we knew that it was Allison who was telling us about the world and the world building and the, the races and the characters and etc. So that was really cool. I, I appreciated that. It was really cool because we've been missing her. Yes. and But now, what were your thoughts of it as not a story? Because I feel like you and I discussed this, that, that it wasn't a story. So yeah. we didn't read a story this week. We read right. uh, an article written by Allison telling us about but the world. But it was nice. I mean, like like you kind of mentioned, it, it was almost written from a storyteller's perspective. Because Allison is a storyteller, and it was in her voice. Absolutely, yeah. I agree with that, 100%. So yeah, I mean, in other words, we didn't miss this as a story as opposed to in told in this way. I mean... Okay when we learned about the world of Unstable, right, we learned about it through a story that was written by Mark Rosewater, but, and we, we went and we reviewed that. You can go back and check that out as well. Yeah. But, um, 
But that was told in a story format of children in a school learning about history. And that was kind of a cool way of doing it, but I don't know. I feel like there are only so many ways of doing that. You know, I mean, look, they are much more creative people than I am. Uh, and so I'm sure that there could be many different iterations of how to get that kind of information across in a story-based format. But I had, I had no issues with the way that this was told as not a story, but like I said, an article written from Allison's perspective or by Allison. So yeah, the only thing I disliked about it is that it was so short because mm -hmm. I felt, yeah, I felt yeah. like I liked okay. the, the story and I thought it was fun and I thought it was good and it just would have been cooler if there had been more. And I don't know if there was more, to be honest with you. You know what I mean? Like, I'm sure there was a ton of world building that went into this place, right. but I feel like she did a great job of concisely yeah, talking like about it all. Yeah, it into one story slash article. Right, and I, and I appreciated the brevity of it in that it got a lot out. There was yeah. a lot of information that was gained through that. Um without it dr kind of dragging on. Right. And so but it also wasn't just here is a place called Battle Bond. Yeah. Blah 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 yeah. blah blah. This is the name of the plane. <laughs> yeah. And these are the people who live here right. and this is what they do. And and so speaking of which, one of the things that we both really enjoyed was the illustrations and the descriptions of the different races, the different characters that we would see, for example, Azra, elves, goblins, humans, homunculi, they, I feel like they were all so fleshed out for, um, for the fact that it wasn't a story, right? We didn't hear anything from any of their perspectives, but you get an idea of who they are as people, mm -hmm. as, 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 you know, the different races, and what they bring to the world of Battlebond, whether they are the competitors, the audience, the, um, the judges, right, like the homunculi are, it was so cool to be able to read that and see the different roles because, and we'll talk about this in a second, but it's a broad sport on Kylem in, in, um, in Valor's Reach. And with that, it, there are certain things that kind of come into your mind. It's like, oh, it's a coliseum or a stadium type of a locale. And so what does that mean? Well, it doesn't, it's not out of the ordinary that there would be judges or referees around, that there would be the competitors, that there would be an audience, that it might be somewhat of a rabid fan base. And so, you know, um, and with certain instances, you would, it, it, things that are common to our knowledge here on Earth of, you know, hey, things could be, could interact with the audience, right? Something that happened during the game, there's a possibility that it interacts with the audience. Think of baseball and the the um, the crowd trying to catch foul balls or yeah. home runs or something like that. And in this instance, you have that being handled with the homunculi casting kind of counter magic to prevent stray spells or fireballs or whatever from going into the crowd. And so those kinds of things I feel like are somewhat universally understood, even if you are not a fan of sports or are not right. super familiar with sports, it's kind of just universally yeah, understood. Like we are definitely not. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, like you said, that's, that's sort of a, an understood thing that happens in sports. Mm -hmm. Just generally, it doesn't really matter what the sport is. Things end up out of bounds, mm -hmm. whatever they are, balls or pucks or, you know, whatever. Yeah. And yeah, they, they, they do their best. They could end up hitting the audience. Mm -hmm. Or, again, having the audience interact in some way, especially, like, obviously, if it's rogue magic, there's nothing you can do about it. But right. for a ball, it's always nice. You're like, oh, cool, I caught a foul ball. Maybe you get it signed by somebody. Like, that's always a cool experience. And maybe maybe one of the reasons that you go is to, is to try to, that's something that you love, is the opportunity to maybe catch a foul ball or something. Mm -hmm. But um, speaking of that kind of topic, though, it was inter it was an interesting contrast in our opinion Amy you brought this up more so than I did I kind of just contributed to the discussion but the the concept of where Allison was telling us that on the the realm of Kylem that a lot of people if not most people are into the sport that is held the 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 martial magic that goes on in Valor's Reach the martial magic competitions and that's different Right. right. What was and my it? comment was like, not everybody's into sports, and, and it, so like, 
you know. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it was it, an interesting like, contrast. It, it just, I don't know, it just kind of sounds like. People saying, oh, well, everybody loves the Patriots if they're Americans, you know, because football and they're Patriots. And it's like, no. Right. Well, even, but I would even go broader than that. It's just That's like, like saying that. It just that sounds like super generalizing to be like, oh, well, all the people of this race do this one thing and all the people of this race do this one thing. And, you know, everybody likes sports and it's like. Okay, that's not a very realistic scenario. Right. Well, I, like I said, I would even go broader than that with what you were saying. I wouldn't say, oh, you know, making the generalization that everyone loves the Patriots. I'd make the generalization everyone loves, in that case, football, but otherwise like baseball. It's America's pastime, right? So for that to be the case, maybe some people overseas feel like every American loves baseball because it's America's pastime. No. no. <laughs> there are people that find baseball extremely boring. There are people that find baseball annoying. I mean, there there are a lot of different reasons, and I can't list even close to all of them here, for why some people don't enjoy all the sports. But I don't know. I thought that that was a, a minor annoyance. I, I don't know that I had... I think you were a little bit... Uh, had a little bit more of a problem with it than well, I did. just because I feel like I spend a lot of time telling people and trying to explain to people that I don't care about sports. You know... They'd be like, oh, did you see the game? Blah, 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 blah. No, I don't care. Mm -hmm. Go away. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I, you want to talk to me about, you know, spells that I can do in D&D &D as a druid? Great. I'll talk to you about that forevermore. But talk to her in the comments I, about I, I do not care about football or baseball or basketball or... Whatever your sport is that you feel inclined to tell me about, I just don't care. Right, and and I feel <laughs> like I mean I feel like that's kind of a, a big topic that I'd really rather not fully delve into, <laughs> um, because there are I mean there are people out there who are rabid fans of certain sports, and whether that means that they're sitting at home screaming at the television, or that they go out to the games and purchase tickets and scream at the opposing team, or or something like that, or even people who will go to the office, because I've got plenty of them, people that, that go to the office and discuss statistics and, and money and players and, and things like that, all of that's totally fine. There are then groups of people who just dislike sports, and there are groups of people who dislike sports so much that they hate people that like sports. And I feel I like hate there's... hate people that like sports. I'm not I implying. I definitely, like, hate when people try to, like... I don't, when they just, like, assume that I like sports and just try to have a whole conversation with me about it, it's like, no, I, I don't care. Right. So... Like, you can, you can mention that, like, your favorite team won or whatever, like, good for you, but, you know, I don't... I don't know names of teams. I don't care. I don't care what sports they play. Like, I, you know, none of that is important to me. Mm -hmm. And so it would just be great if, like, we didn't have to spend a half hour talking about it because it's what you care about. Moving away from the sports talk a bit, uh, let's go to... There was something that I noticed that was actually kind of funny that we're doing this so far removed from when the article came out. Recently, we had the banned and restricted announcements for uh, Legacy for Gitaxian Probe and Deathrite Shaman. Uh, it, we don't heavily do Constructed. I just, yeah. I follow people on Twitter, and there was a lot of discussion on it the other day. So, with that, the article for the banned and restricted announcement was up on the sidebar while we were reading this story, and the picture on the side was the Gitaxian Probe art. And I encourage you to go back and look at the Gitaxian Probe art and then look at the out-of-bounds art from this article and or just look at the out-of-bounds card. The homunculi, that, or the homunculus, that is closer to the viewer in the art for out-of-bounds, his pupil is different than the other homunculus that is in the art. The, the homunculus that's further away from the viewer has a single solitary black pupil right in the center of his one eye, which is what is typical for human beings. Yeah. The other homunculus had dual black circles that were connected with a black line. Hmm. Which is, that's that homunculus's version of a pupil, I assume. 
What I found interesting. I noticed that. Oh yeah, we can we can go look at it afterwards. Yeah. 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 But the one thing that that I thought was interesting, especially because, like I said, the Gataxian probe art was on the side. The Gataxian probe, which is a sing the, the the main art for Gataxian probe, if if there are others, uh, it was the singular eye attached to that construct thing. Um, if you look at the pupil for the Gataxian probe art, and like I said, I encourage you to look at both. It's the same as the dual black circles with the line connecting it, but this one was vertically done as opposed to horizontally done. Just something that I noticed, thought was kind of interesting. So maybe someone who's more into Vorthos than I am, who is, who is more into the lore and the backstories and stuff, maybe they could explain in the comments or otherwise uh, why that is the case, why the Gitaxian probe pupil is so different, or I'm sorry, so similar to that one homunculus's pupil from different era, you know, uh, planes and, and etc. It was just interesting to me if if there was a reason for that, which there usually with their art intricacies, there usually is, um, as opposed to just two people happen to think of the same thing. Maybe it's a homunculus. Maybe. I, again, I'm not, I'm not fully familiar with the lore behind the Gataxian probe art. So, yeah, anybody that has that information, that would be cool to talk about. Leave it in the comments, guys. So, for... Uh, As always. Yes. Um, the, the last thing I wanted to talk about broadly, or oh, sorry, specifically for this story, was the fact that reading through this, it, it hit me so hard that this realm is so meta. Right? A lot of the world building for Kylem seems so meta to me. You have, it talked about the competitions in Valor's Reach, the two versus two competition between the, the teams. And obviously that's shown in the partnership mechanic of the actual set, but it's also two-headed giant games of magic. Right. And it's a tournament where then it culminates in the final battle between the best two, you know, best two teams of two to determine who the winner is. Well, that sounds like a magic tournament that you would go to at a local game store or a GP or something like that. Then you have the fact that the game is decided or the, the, the tournament is decided by have you have points. And you have a certain number of points when you start, and then as you get hit by spells or don't knock them away or whatever during the, the competition, those points go down. And the first team to lose all of their points or go to zero life loses. And there are that all... That doesn't sound like any game we're familiar with. Nope. And there are alternate win conditions as well of the confetti. Right or the, the the style points that you could get the the confetti thrown by the crowd, but those are just examples of alternate win conditions for Magic the Gathering. Whether that is you deck your opponent, which we were able to do once, which was super fun. Um, uh -huh. Whether you are able to there's you play a card that says if all of these conditions are met, you win the game. That kind of thing. Th those are just another example of alternate win conditions, and so. I thought, like, as reading... Oh, and I'm sorry, Amy, why don't you talk about that one as well, the, oh. with the goblins. Yeah, the goblins cosplay their favorite warriors. Amazing. Warriors so cool. Warriors or... Yeah, competitors, warriors. Yeah. Um, and there was the one uh, cheering fanatic, I think it was, that was, that was shown. And again, it, the other cool thing about this article that made it worth reading was getting to look at the art and having further explanations for why some of the art was the way it was. Right. Including the art for the Cheering Fanatic, when you know that, that that goblin is cosplaying, you look and they're cosplaying as Sylvia Brightspear. The, the partner that partners with Korvath, I believe is its name, the, the dragon. So it's the knight, she, it's the same helmet. If you look at the pictures of those two side by side, it's the exact same helmet, and that's who that goblin is cosplaying as. I love that. I think that's so cool. The fact that, uh, and this was talked about online very heavily, but I love this, that the homunculi, since they cannot speak, communicate through sign language. And that because of this, every adult on Kylem can understand and speak with sign language. That's so cool. It's, and it's such a nice, just little added. They didn't need that. 
that didn't need to be there for that set to work. And you wouldn't have gotten it if you were solely looking at the cards. But it's such a nice introduction. It was such a nice thing to add in there that was just, you read it and you're like, oh, that's cool. Right? I, I, yeah. really, I really appreciated that. So, yeah. That being said, uh, there's some, a couple of things that we wanted to talk about. First of all, uh, with Battle Bond being what we're discussing, it's, this is the last, you know, video before the um, M19 pre-release, which is this weekend, which hopefully you will all get to go to. But if you're new to the channel or if you're unfamiliar, we go to the midnight pre-release for every set, really. Uh, we go to our sponsor sure. store. <laughs> yes, we go to our sponsor store. We get our product at midnight. We open it on camera for all of you and we get it out to you as soon as we can. And we try our best. It, it varies a little bit for when it comes out, but we try our best to get it out to you as quickly as possible so that you can see some of the cool cards so that whether you made it to a pre-release or not, you can see some of the cool stuff yeah, that gets opened. Right. Yes, by us. And then as well as we walk around the store and see what cool cards get opened, going to be some Elder Dragons and, and things like that. So yeah. that should be awesome. Hopefully you guys will come back for that. When it pops up, our logo is here. You can subscribe and find out when that video comes out. But also, with Battlebond being part of the discussion, for the past two Mondays, we have had Battlebond openings coming out because, as Amy mentioned, we competed in some tournaments. And in those tournaments, we won a little bit, as yeah. I mentioned. And so we got some packs. And so we opened those for all of you, for all of your entertainment. And I would say each video had at least one nice surprise in the pack openings. I'm not going to spoil anything because I recommend that you watch them because it was a good time. But yeah, I, I would recommend going and watching those as well. One, it helps us out a lot, but two, hopefully you enjoy them. Yeah. Uh, and I encourage you to go check them out. You can hear, you won't see, but you can hear both of us in those as well, uh, opening our individual packs. I mean, you'll see our hands opening the packs. That's true. Get up close and personal with these babies. Yeah. I don't know why. Uh, and last but not least, I want to give a shout out and a huge thank you to a big friend of the channel, DAM314 on Twitch. We will have the link to his Twitch down in the description. And why does that matter? Why do you care? Well, because right after we're done filming this, we are leaving to go meet up with DAM314. Dave is his first name. Like I said, very good friend of ours, of the yes. channel, etc. Um, and we are going to go be on his stream tonight. So... If you aren't following us on Twitter, promised it would be twice, you should do so. The link to our Twitter and our Facebook are down in the description, yes. and our Facebook as well, honestly. The information has been up on both of those this past week, mm -hmm. that we are going to be on his stream tonight, and that by the time you are seeing this, we already did. I encourage you, if you're interested, go check it out. Go to his Twitter, or his Twitter, his Twitch. They're so similar, it's very <laughs> annoying. Uh, go to his Twitch and check us out. We're in the yes. bots. So uh, hopefully you guys enjoy. I'm really looking forward to it. Dave's a really uh, fun guy to hang out with. I really enjoy spending time with him. We really enjoy spending time with him. So hopefully it's it'll be a good time. It's an honor to be on his stream. Exactly. Uh, we're playing some Jackbox Party Pack. If you do go watch or if you follow, then follow him on Twitter, on Facebook, etc. Let him know Geek For All sent you that so that he knows that it was worth it having us on. Because I'm sure we'll have fun, but you know. Or it was the worst. Yep. And he'll never speak to us again. It's not true. Anyway, so... I mean, that's probably going to happen, <laughs> but it won't be based on that. Yeah. It's been, you know, however many years that we've been friends with him, but this, this will be the right. straw that breaks the camel's back. Exactly. Uh, so I want to thank you guys so much for watching this and for doing all of those things, if and when you do them. Uh, I'm, we, I know we Hopefully really appreciate you do. it. Yeah. Yes, we would very much appreciate it. And... As always, feel free to leave your thoughts, comments, concerns in the comments section below. As we have now done talking to you about this, you can talk to us about this article and show off your... Hashtag Vorthos Pride. I had to dance around that a little bit. That was weird. Yeah. Sorry. That was um, an interesting lead into it. It was a, it was a crappy lead into it. You yeah. can say it. Yeah. Anyway, like I said, thank you guys so much for watching another episode of JAR here on Geek For All. We will be back next week with more M19 stories, so stay tight for those. I have been Joe. And I'm Amy. And as we always say, in whichever video of ours you watch next, we will see you all next time. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>